Hello and welcome to Taya Talk. I am David Strickle, your host, but you probably already know that. So uh, <laughs> uh, if you're out there watching and signing on, just say hello. I always like to know who's on with me when we do these live. Of course, you're all welcome to watch these anytime because once we record them, they live on in Patreon in the feed forever, I assume. So you can always go back and review these. But the title of this one and what we're going to focus on today is how do you know when you're in the matrix and when you're not in the matrix. Pretty big topic. Morning, David. Good to see you on here. We talk a lot about the matrix. And it was funny, uh, a while back, somebody said something to the effect of, gosh, when are we going to move on from talking about the matrix? I think they were sick of hearing about it. But it's very clear the stream wants to utilize that term to really define when we're in that mass consciousness of limitation or that mass consciousness belief system that creates limitation for us among other things. And when we are fully aligned, if not mostly aligned with source consciousness and as all things, it's vibrational. So you can be really immersed in the matrix. You could be somewhat immersed. You could be out of it a little bit. You can be mostly out of it. So it's not this on or off thing you're in or you're out. But I think for the purposes of teaching and, and recognizing when you're in or out, it might be helpful to really think about it like, like that, to think about it in terms of I'm in the matrix or I'm not in the matrix. And we have to remember that when we're talking about being in or out, we want to make sure that as Tyus, we're not falling into that trap of judgment about that. Oh, I don't want to be in the matrix. I can't be in the matrix. I've got to be out or I'm not practicing Taya right. I'm getting it wrong. That's not what any of this is about. And it's certainly not about judging other people that are in the matrix. It's observing, knowing when someone is, is deep in the matrix, when they are deeply impacted by polarity and knowing when you are interacting with somebody or observing somebody that is having that experience without judging them for having it and without judging yourself for slipping into it. So these are tricky things in the beginning to start wrapping your head around. We're not going to judge it. We're going to observe it and we want to be aware of it because when we get caught up in the matrix, I know uh, I talk about my, uh, my, my TikTok. Um, I don't want to call it an addiction because it's certainly not an addiction. I can stop at any time. I promise. Uh, <laughs> uh, but my, my use of TikTok, it, I find it interesting because there's a lot of things on TikTok that I find very entertaining. There's things on there that I find informative. But being that it's social media, it's very easy to get caught up in a thread of things that are not necessarily expansive for me, things that are there to induce fear and things that are just a reporting of the facts that could induce fear if I were fearful about a topic. The, the, there are a couple of uh, people that share news on TikTok and I like the way they do it because it is in a reporting fashion where they're just talking about what's going on in the world. Uh, it's, inter it's interesting. I don't feel like I need to be informed. I don't think we need to be informed of what's going on everywhere else in the world. I know the matrix tells us that we do. The matrix tells us that to, to be informed is a good thing to just know. Uh, I don't think that we necessarily have to do that. I think we can blissfully live our lives outside of the matrix and not include any of that stuff in it if we don't want to. In fact, I know a lot of cults and religions and things like that sort of operate that way. Don't look at any of that, only focus on this. But of course, in Taya, we don't have any rules. We're not a religion. So we can go and play however we want to play. And if that play takes our vibe down, if that play draws us back into the matrix, that's not a bad thing. It's just an experience that we're having, period. Like everything else. Everything is just an experience that we're having, an experience that we're moving through. And we can have and move through any experience in appreciation or even joy or something other than that. And the focus in the Taya practice is to move through every experience in joy and appreciation because the end goal or the end result of the practice is joy, clarity, and abundance. Those are the three things that those of us that practice this are seeking to make our lives lives of joy clarity and abundance and when we're observing the matrix and not getting drawn into it in appreciation then 
we're not in it. But when we're observing the matrix and it's triggering us in some way and drawing us in, then yes, we're getting drawn back into the matrix. And the matrix obviously has this power and it's, it's, a, it's a powerful vibration that we're witnessing that it, there's a lot of aspects of it that are, are there to draw you back in on different topics. And what I love about it is that whenever we feel ourselves being drawn back in, it's just like feeling yourself lowering your vibration. They're really kind of the same thing, catching it and noticing, wow, this is, this is triggering me. Why is that? And the very first thing that we do is tie us as we, we celebrate the trigger. We show appreciation for the fact that we have identified something that exists within us that is being activated by whatever we're observing. And we know that when we're observing in anything less, anything below zero, anything below neutral, we're more apt to be triggered down there. When we're above zero and we're above neutral, we're not going to be triggered because we're above neutral where we have source flowing we can observe and appreciate without being drawn into and that's the focus that's what we're all seeking in this practice that's what the practice does for us it allows us to have that experience so knowing when you're in and when you're out really has to do with where you are vibrationally and i shared that graphic a while back and i'll share it again if i need to but it's in the patreon feed of the the spiral with those numeric qualities um, our quantities uh, added to it. So we have positive 20 at the top and negative 20 at the bottom, and then five point increments all the way in between with zero being in the middle. So we know that when we're at a, a positive five, we're not being drawn into the matrix. Our vibration is, is high enough that we are experiencing peacefulness, joy, uh, not, you know, top of the spiral. Oh my God, everything is, is perfect, but general joy and appreciation. And we're not being triggered and we are, uh, experiencing an, an emotional result a vibration that feels good and it doesn't feel fearful and it doesn't, uh, judgment doesn't come in, <coughs> but Although the practice is about being aware of where we are vibrationally all the time, we're not aware of our vibration consciously all the time. There are times that we're sort of coasting on autopilot throughout the day. And we don't want to work to be focused and checking in, you know, from minute to minute to minute on our vibe. But certainly we can have an experience where we're not doing any work to move our vibration up. We're sort of in get it done mode. We get out of bed, there's things to go do. We start getting life done. And then suddenly we realize that we're not above neutral. We're not necessarily in joy. Maybe we're feeling a little sluggish. Maybe we're feeling just a little bit of angst about something and we catch ourselves and we're probably in that, you know, somewhere between zero and negative five range. And I think that's where we get drawn back into the matrix. So you get into that range, you pop on the news or social media or, or whatever, and something's being reported and it grabs you and it grabs you and it sort of draws you down. Um, I have, I have heard some things lately around politics and the Supreme court in the United States. Uh, I was talking in the team meeting this morning that, uh, somebody said that, uh, supposedly Hitler has said that Hitler, <laughs> Putin, excuse me. Putin has, uh, Freudian slip there for sure. Putin has said that he, his goal is to morally cleanse Europe. So all of these people thinking that they're going to escape the, the tyranny of the, the Supreme court in the United States and rush off to Europe. Well, the matrix isn't going to allow that to happen because now Europe is under threat. And you can take that seriously, or you can understand that escaping geographically without cleaning up your vibration and getting out of the matrix, you're just going to take the matrix with you. You're just going to take your vibration with you. So it's easy to see what's going on in the world right now and think, gosh, there's no place that's safe. And you know, that's true. There's no geographic place that ensures safety. There just isn't because you could pick up from the United States because you don't like what's going on here now and move to Canada and have something negative occur in Canada or South America or Europe. 
uh, you know, or, or anywhere. So you can take that vibration of fear with you, that vibration of unrest or unease or, or not well-being or whatever you want to call it. You can take that vibration with you somewhere. So it's far more powerful. And we all know this because in, in the Taya practice, we show it to ourselves that we are as safe as we believe we are and we're as free as we believe we are. And we can look at what's going on in the matrix and choose to participate in it or not. Years ago, I, I taught myself this before I ever uh, heard the term the matrix applied to anything other than the movie. Um, I remember when, gosh, it was around 2000. It was 2000. It was when uh, George W. Bush got elected. And when George W. Bush got elected, I was in a relationship with someone who was really into politics. I, I have been somewhat into politics throughout my lifetime. Certainly, I've always voted and all that. But I wasn't really into it the way he was. But he was very, uh, very liberal and really thought when Bush got elected, and we lived in Florida at the time, and that was a contested election in the United States, um, he was really upset. He was really, really to the point of upset crying that Bush got elected. He thought that Bush and Cheney were just going to be the end of the world. And I already knew enough about law of attraction at that time where I said, I'm not doing this. I'm not, I'm not going to allow who the president is to impact my well being because I, at that point in my life, I realized that this, this political thing is swinging back and forth all the time. So if every time your person doesn't get elected, you go into a belief system that your life is going to be somehow negatively impacted, then you're going to create that reality. And over the next eight years, I sold my house in the recession for asking price. And I wasn't supposed to be able to do that. I got into a new job that paid more and I wasn't supposed to be able to do that. And I made more money year after year after year. And I wasn't supposed to be able to do that. So I'm moving into the recession now from, from Bush, but all of that kind of flowed together, that whole experience of Bush being president. And then the following, you know, the, the 2008 recession that followed that, that whole string of things during that time span, I didn't allow Bush being president to negatively impact my life. My life was great. I didn't allow the recession to negatively impact my income. My income went up year after year after year. I wasn't participating. And I remember when the recession hit, I solidly said, I'm not participating in this. I'm just not going to. He had a different experience. Even though we were in a relationship together, his life unraveled and got worse. And our, end, our relationship ended up, uh, ended up ending uh, as a result of all of that, which was a good thing because we went in different directions. But I just decided I wasn't going to participate. So that was the matrix allowing who the president is or the recession to impact me would have been of the matrix. That is the matrix. So why then can we not take that attitude and apply it toward anything and everything? I'm not going to participate in that. It's not going to affect me. And it's not, it wasn't a, you know, the, the, I'm not going to participate in it. That is, that is kind of the same vibe as that. Wouldn't it be nice vibration? Because it wasn't a, no, 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 I'm not that. I'm not going to be that. I'm going to fight against that. I'm going to be the opposite of that. I'm going to do my mantras every day and I'm going to be abundant no matter what. Think about that, how that shifts the vibration into that vibration of need. That vibration of there's still fear there and you're battling the fear and you're, you're trying to battle the fear with spirituality or using the law of attraction or something like that. That's a whole different vibe then. I'm just not going to participate in it. I'm going to go live my life. I'm going to do my thing. I'm not going to pay attention to it. I'm not allowing that to impact me. And I am going to be joyful and abundant. And I was. So I know now because of the work that I've done that everything that's going on politically in the world, I don't have to participate in that. I don't. And the matrix comes along and says, well, you have to. You have to participate in it. You've got to vote. I still vote. You got to, uh, I don't even know why, but I do, <clears throat> um, you know, you, you've got to have a side, you've got to take a stand. And if you don't take a stand, they're going to come for you. Well, that's the matrix telling you that you've got to be fearful and angry and pushing against 
are your next. And we know that anything that we focus upon, we feed. So if I'm fearful and judgmental about something and pushing against it, I'm creating it and I'm creating it in my reality. So I don't want to participate in the matrix. I don't. My, my focus with my Taya practice is to detune the matrix. It's, it's there. A lot of people are participating in it. It's fine that they are. They're having their experience. I'm having mine. My experience is, is one that is not participating in the matrix. And my work now is to catch myself when I'm being drawn into it. And if I can't pick up my phone and click on the TikTok app without being drawn in, then I need to step away from it. Because it's it goes back to that, is this worth going down my spiral over? Is it worth getting drawn into the matrix to be entertained or informed on TikTok? Until such time that I've detuned it so much that I can listen, I can hear the fearful things. I can observe the matrix attempting to draw me back in and not be impacted by it. <clears throat> so if you have questions about the matrix, you can type those in now. But to get to the, the bottom line of how you know when you're in and when you're not, it really is, are you experiencing fear and judgment? What, what is your, how do you feel? What are your feelings around this experience of fear and judgment? Are you triggered? Are you paying attention? Are you worried? Are you worried for other people? Are you thinking, gosh, there's nowhere I can go and be safe? Well, you're in the matrix. You are a, a being of the matrix when you're operating in anything less than joy. Joy, clarity, and abundance is the focus. So anytime you catch yourself feeling that little dip, below neutral, you're knocked out of joy. And when you're moving through low vibrational flow and you're just feeling that, you're not necessarily in the matrix. You are in the matrix that when you allow that low vibrational period that we all experience to then become a trigger period where you, you're bored, you open an app, you go on social media, you read something, and then all of a sudden you're triggered by it. Yeah, you're in the matrix. When you're believing that any aspect of the matrix, when you're believing how our, our financial system draws you in, when you're believing that you are in lack and you can't afford something and that, that life is unfair and that you're being uh, unjustly charged for something or gosh, it's so hard that you know these bills are due every 30 days and life is so hard. Am I going to have enough money? That's all the matrix. When you're out of the matrix, you are in a mindset that the universe pampers you always, no matter what. Whether you're working a job or whether you have a guaranteed income, it does not matter. Because when you're outside the matrix, you know that you are going to be taken care of. And maybe it looks the way the matrix tells you it's supposed to look, and maybe it doesn't. Because remember, the matrix has a version of what well-being is. And the matrix version of well-being very much is tied to consumerism. Being out of the matrix means having a new car or a new jet or a bigger house or, uh, you know, a, an improved body or something of, of that nature. That's all the matrix. Really, the, the, the only thing that we seek is joy, clarity and abundance, whatever that looks like. So when we achieve joy, clarity and abundance, we are experiencing anything that we want to experience, but it doesn't necessarily look the way the matrix tells us it's supposed to look. It doesn't. Because there's so many aspects of, of what we think we want that are rooted in our matrix training. So get to the bottom of why you want what you want. What I want is just to be relaxed and chill and have fun and, and experience the things that I like on earth, period. But if you're thinking that it needs to look a certain way or be a certain way or show up a certain way, you're in the matrix. That, oh gosh, I need to get this education and get that job and, and do this thing to have that. That's the matrix. 
you can get rid of all that other stuff and just say, here's something I'd like to experience. Wouldn't it be nice? It's as easy as that. It's as easy as the wouldn't it be nice and getting out of the way of the universe and allowing it just to happen. Again, I, I spend a lot of time every week talking to the Taya masters, people that have been practicing this for quite some time, and we all experience that. We all experience getting out of our own way and allowing magical things to flow in and sometimes not even necessarily recognizing until it's there that, oh yeah, I have that thing that I thought wouldn't it be nice at one point and here it is. And now that it's here, what a lovely thing it is that I, I have been experiencing this. I manifested it because you know that everything is a manifestation. Everything is a manifestation. Uh, it's not just, a uh, you know, thinking about something intentionally and having it materialize for us. I know a lot of people use that, that term as, oh, I manifested. I, have you ever manifested anything? Yes, we've all manifested. We've manifested everything that we're perceiving in our lives. All of it is a manifestation. And it all manifests the same way via our focus. Our focus via our, usually using the tool of our imagination, we are focusing on something, we are observing, and our imagination kicks in and either imagines us experiencing something or not experiencing something or not wanting to experience something, but it doesn't matter. If we're focused on it, we are bringing it in. We are giving it life. We're including it. And if we do that enough, the universe is going to ensure that we have a steady stream of it in some way. So with our imagination being our highest creative tool and understanding that it really is as simple as choosing to participate in it or not. Yes, I'm going to participate in that. No, I'm not participating in this other thing, period. I'm going to participate in joy, clarity, and abundance. I'm going to participate in being happy every day. I'm going to participate in understanding the world so deeply that I appreciate all of it. And that's going to be my life. And when vibrational flow knocks me out of that joyful state of being, or if I'm experiencing a spin out on some level, my work is to find appreciation for that. And in finding appreciation for it, understanding that that is the, the solving of it, that is the moving through the experience. And then whenever I find myself in fear or judgment, I know that I've allowed myself to be drawn back into the matrix and not beating myself up about that. Because a trip out of the matrix is as easy as a trip up your spiral. Ah, the matrix. When I'm thinking that I have to do something in a certain way, or that there's a deadline or a timeline, or that there's something that, that is, is, is instilling some fear in me, that's the matrix. I'm in it. How do I get out of it? I align with source consciousness, appreciation of all that is. How wonderful it is that I have these tools that I now recognize when I'm in the matrix and I know what it is. I don't have to be afraid of it because I know that if I dip into it, it's just the experience that I'm having and moving out of it is as simple as, as finding appreciation for it. Period. Period. So anything less than joy makes you susceptible to being drawn into the matrix. And as soon as fear or judgment is activated or a belief system that something is complicated or that you have to do something, that's the matrix. It's a, it's a powerful thing, but we are more powerful than it because we ultimately have sovereignty over our own reality. So we get to choose whether we play in that matrix or not. And we're using our imagination to create the matrix. We're using our imagination to create, not participating in it. We're using our imagination to move toward the solving of our problems, the meeting our obstacles and joy and the allowing those processes to elevate us vibrationally. It's a magical practice <clears throat> and you don't have to geographically move yourself to experience anything. You can use your imagination to, to shift your point of attraction, shift your consciousness 
and shift yourself right out of the matrix anytime, any place, no matter what's going on in your life. You can move right out of it. And the wonderful thing about the practices is the more you practice this, the easier that process becomes. The easier it is just to get right out of the matrix, just to move right up your spiral, to move out of fear and judgment, to return to trust, to understand that you don't have to participate in anything that you don't want to participate in in this life, because all of it is a consciousness creation. And yes, you might have a noisy matrix clamoring to draw you back into it, but appreciate it for its power. Appreciate the brilliance of how the matrix has so many mechanisms to seduce us back into it. You know, I had an identity theft at the end of 2019. And those of you that have been listening for a while probably remember that. And I remember when I opened my phone and I tried to text Michael and the text wouldn't go through. And then I tried to call and the call wouldn't go through. And then all of these things, I'm, I'm realizing that my phone is dead. And then I'm seeing an email pop up from my bank that somebody has created a Zelle account in my name and is zelling money out of my bank account. And then I try to go into my bank account only to find that my passwords have all been changed. And I started figuring out, oh my gosh, someone's stolen my identity. They've taken my phone number. They've taken my email. They've taken my bank accounts. I felt powerless. And I moved into solution mode pretty quick and we got some other phones and we got on the phone and then all of a sudden it was, I was on hold forever for the phone, cell phone company and for the bank. We had two different uh, phones that were other phones simultaneously trying to contact these entities to try to stop this. And while I was sitting on hold, I realized this is taking me down my spiral. I'm in deep fear right now in judgment of how could this be? Why are they doing this to me? Oh my gosh, stopped all that and realized I need to move to appreciation. And I did. I thought, gosh, how brilliant it is to do this on a Saturday evening at 7 p.m. when no one's available, no one's answering the phones at AT AT&T, and no one's answering the phones over it. You know, it was like prime time, I guess, to not have any help from the bank or the cell phone company. (coughs) And we were literally on hold for the fraud department of Bank of America for like an hour. And while I sat there on hold, I detuned. I thought, wow, somebody put a lot of effort into this. This is brilliant. And in my detuning of it, by the next day, 24 hours or so later, all of it was solved. And a few months into COVID, I uh, contacted my old barber about getting a beard trim. And uh, he said something about, "How, how are you recovering? How are you doing? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, your identity theft. That was awful. That was terrible. That was the worst thing. I'd forgotten about it. I was like, oh yeah, that, Uh, you know, it was fine. Yeah. I went to the bank. I got all my money back. I got everything, you know, figured out. I have a much more complex password system now, uh, which I probably needed in the first place and it's all good. And now I look back at that as it's just this experience that I had. It wasn't, oh my gosh, it's horrible. It's awful. I shouldn't have experienced that. Uh, It's the worst thing ever. It wasn't. It wasn't, it probably could have been much worse than it was, but I learned to find appreciation and I used that tool while I was in the midst of the, the, the drama of it. So we have all these things that are elements of the matrix designed to draw us back in all the time. It is up to us whether we allow ourselves to be drawn into it or not. And I have found that the the further I go and the more I do the practice, the more I'm out of it the less I'm drawn into it, the more I'm in appreciation of exactly what I'm manifesting. And now I know what I'm in it. And it's just a little game to catch. Oh, that's the matrix. That's the matrix trying to draw me in. Nope. I'm not going to participate. You know, you, you've heard that, uh, th- that not today, Satan, you've heard that out there. You know, if you want to play with it and say something like that, it's fine. Just don't go into the battling of it. Because when you start battling and really pushing against, that's when you're, you're really activating it. You're getting back into it. So I don't see any questions. So I try to keep these to half an hour unless we have a Q&A. <coughs> Excuse me. So I don't see any questions at this time. 
So that's my best advice for knowing when you're in the matrix, when you're out of it, and really using these tools, using that vibrational spiral, knowing when you're at a, a positive five and a negative five, knowing when you're slipping, knowing when something's trying to draw you in, and having these little stop gaps that we create in this practice to catch ourselves sooner and sooner and sooner and completely shift the consciousness in the moment. Not going to participate in it. Not today, Matrix. Not going to participate in it. Not playing your game. Not being drawn into fear. Not going to worry about that. I'm creating my reality. I'm as safe and as healthy and as joyful and as abundant as I believe that I am. And you as well. So thank you all for watching.